Hey there, it's Roxanne Lessa, the Art Quilters Coach, and I'm here today in my studio, super cash, like my new t-shirt. Anyway, um, I want to talk today about one of the most common problems that a lot of my students come across, and I certainly did when I first started working with art quilting and free motion quilting. So I developed a little blueprint, and you can see that I'm wearing my not so clean machingers. Uh, <clears throat> these are one of the indispensable tools that you will need for free motion quilting. Okay, so the first thing that I tell my students to do is to look at their piece, in this case it's this piece, and to decide if they want their quilting to blend or stand out. And that's often the very first thing that you have to consider. Sometimes you just choose threads that you know are gonna match your fabric, but that's not always what you want. So um, what you wanna do is decide, do you want your thread to be matte or shiny? Do you want it to be um, you know, thick or thin? Uh, what kind of effect do you want it to have on your fabric? And you actually want to lay your thread down on top of your fabric so you can see if you want to be able to notice that thread or if you want to be able to blend it and push it into the background. So that's number one, first thing, blend or stand out. The second thing that you want to consider is you want to um, preview the kinds of patterns that you're going to make. An easy way to do this is to take a roll of clear plastic, put it on top of your quilt top, and use some of those whiteboard markers and just sort of, you know, doodle around on top of your quilt top and preview some ideas that you might have, like swirls or straight lines or flowers or whatever you feel comfortable quilting. So you can try it out. If you don't like it, you just wipe it clean and do another pattern. And that way you can kind of work with the patterns and see how they look on your quilt top. Okay, so the third thing you want to make sure you do is make up a quilt sandwich that has the same or similar fabrics that you're using. And then you will, you know, go ahead and layer that together and then start practicing some of those quilt patterns that you want to try out. It's a great time to check on your tensions with various threads to make sure you don't have icky looking tension. Um, it's a great time to actually um, see if you like the threads that you chose by actually previewing the patterns with the threads that you're going to use. And then you can also test your bobbin thread to see if it's compatible with the design that you're doing and um, isn't popping through. What I try to tell my students is when you're first starting out with free motion quilting you want to just quilt, make a little hoop with your hands and just quilt, just worry about the area that's just between your hands and stop with the needle down and then move your hands again and then quilt with that area and then stop with the needle down and so you only have to worry about what's in between your hands. And the gloves will help grip your fabric. And then you just start to play around with the speed of your stitching versus the movement of your hands. Uh, and it also really increases your confidence level because you're actually working with the materials that you're going to be using. And once you've had a chance to do all that and you, you're happy with what you're doing, then go ahead and sit down and work on your quilt for about 30 minutes or so and you will want to wear your quilting gloves and you will want to take a break every 30 minutes so if you have to set up a timer or something because you want to shake out your arms do a couple head rolls and just really you know release whatever tension you might have been holding so I wanted to show you how this actually looks in real life on a real piece thanks for watching